What's up everybody? So in this video, we're going to be determining the centroid of this weird looking shape right here. So let's do it. Okay, before we just start plugging numbers in willy nilly and using the equations and blah, blah, blah. We want to break this up first and really um, explain what we need to do and um, just evaluate our scenario. So givens, finds, and sketch. Uh, these are pretty standard for all engineering classes. So our givens in this case, really just going to be dimensions. Okay. Not too many other things, quite frankly. So dimensions, there aren't forces or anything. Uh, we want to find X bar and Y bar, AKA the centroid of this total shape. And just exactly how are we going to do that? So let's sketch this out. First, let's sketch our shape that we're given our big old shape. And then let's sketch a triangle shape and a square shape to describe how we're gonna find each shape centroid. So basically we need to find each shape centroid to find the total centroid because of this equation right here, which is y bar or x bar equals the sum of the areas times their y bar over the sum of the areas. So basically what this is saying is y bar equals a1 y bar one plus a2 y bar two over a1 plus a2 and etc cetera, etc cetera. in our case it's going to be a1 a2 a3 because we have three shapes present so we're going to need to use this equation to find our total y bar and a very similar equation to find the total x bar it's just the y bars are replaced with x's so we know the areas we know the areas of each shape we have the dimensions present here and uh we can find the area of each of these shapes right the triangle the uh, vertical rectangle and a horizontal rectangle but we do not know their y bars or x bars as of now but we can easily determine that so first let's do a square so a squares x bar and y bar um, you use the equation as follows it's also common sense once you um, once you get it down but you probably already know it really you just might not know exactly the definition so this is our height and this is our base so by this definition, our X bar, which is the distance um, along the X axis away from the origin. Okay. So the distance to the center of the area in the X direction relative to the origin. Okay. So it's, it's going to be base over two. It's going to be half of the base, which is right here. You can see that visually. Then our Y bar is going to be half the height. So it's going to be right here. Then the centroid is going to be present when you bring both of these together it's going to be right smack dab in the middle of this shape. What does this tell us? It basically tells us the center of the areas in both the X and Y direction. So this is the center of the area of this shape. So let's do the same with a triangle now. So here's our triangle we have. Sorry, it's kind of crunched over here. This is our height. This is our base and our equations for a triangle x bar equals base over three y bar equals height over three okay so now let's divide this into three sections kind of like we did the square we didn't really need to with the square slash rectangle because we kind of knew already but okay so there we go three sections okay so our x bar is going to be present base over three what the heck does that mean basically um the easiest way to remember this is it's going to be one third of the distance away from the fat end and two thirds from the skinny end so this would be our skinny end. This would be our fat end. It's uh, it's basically just the end, the more vertical end, okay, is a good way to describe it. The end with the higher height, it's gonna be one third away because it's gonna have more area condensed into a smaller um, X axis base, pretty much. And these are equivalent areas, okay? This tall one and these, the one over here, the longer one, both equivalent areas. So therefore our X bar is gonna lie right here. And the same for the Y. It's gonna be one third on the fat again and two thirds on the skinnier. So it's gonna be right here. So this is gonna be our fat down here. Okay, you can see all that. And then it's gonna be our skinny up here. Okay, so it's gonna be right here. So one third and then two thirds. And for the Y bar, once again, um, the quote unquote fat end really has more area present towards the X axis where the skinnier end really has more area present along the Y axis. 
okay so I hope that makes sense but bring these together like the squares and you get your old centroid so now we can take each shapes y bar and x bar multiply it by its area sum that x bar and y bar uh, with the other shapes and then divide by the total sum of the areas and that will fulfill the requirements of our equation and one last thing super quick because if you remember x bar and y bar are both about the origin since we have a shape right here in our problem basically this x bar right you you already know it's right here as we described so this is the base it's going to be halfway right but actually it's going to be halfway so it's going to be half of this base plus this base because remember we're going about the origin which is way back here so it's going to be half of this base plus this base and that will yield our x bar okay so finally solving uh first we're going to want to make a table these questions are always done best with a table professors advise it um, there are ways to do it out by hand and just show the calculations, but it's best by table. So there we go. Okay, so we're going to want to write each shape down. It's area, it's y bar, x bar. It's area times it's y bar, it's area times it's x bar. And then we can go ahead and use our equations that we specified before. So for our first shape, we're going to do the triangle. Get the harder one, quote unquote, out of the way. And then we have our vertical rectangle. And then we have our horizontal rectangle. So the area for our triangle here is going to be one half base times height. So it's going to be one half base. So 90 times our height, which is 90, 40 plus 50. And that yields 4,050. Oh, my bad comma right here. And then we have the same for our vertical rectangle. So it's going to be base times height, except for not one half. So 40 times the height, which is 90. And that's going to yield 3,600. And then we have our horizontal, which is going to be base times height again. So 140 multiplied by 40. And that's going to yield 5,600. Moving on, we want to find each shape's y bar. Actually, real quick, let's sum these together because let's just do it now. We know our equation uses the sum of all the areas. So let's just do it now. And when you sum those together, you get 13,250. And that's millimeters squared. So then we want to find y bar. So let's start with our triangle. And because you know y bar is one third from the fatter end, quote unquote, and two thirds from the skinnier end, let's divide this into three. So one, two. We're going to do right here. That's our fatter, and this is our skinnier up here. The areas are equal, right? This one just has more surface area along the x, while this one has more along the y. So it's going to be a third upwards from the x-axis, which is going to be a third of 90, 50 plus 40, which is 30. Then we're going to want to do the same with our vertical rectangle. So we have 50 plus 40 divided by 2 is 45. That's this distance. Remember, it's about right here. Then we have our um, horizontal, which is going to be 40 divided by 2, which is 20. Then we want to move on to our x-bar. So right here and right here for our triangle. And once again, one third from the fatter end, two thirds from the skinnier. This is our skinnier over here. You can see it visually. This is our fatter. And because it's two thirds from over here and the origins right here, it's going to be 60. And then for the next shape, it's going to be 90 because we're going about the origin. So you want to add to the left. So it's going to be 90 plus half of 40, which is 110. And then for our final shape, it's going to be half of 140 plus 90 plus 40, which yields 200. Then finally, all we do is multiply the area by the y bar for each shape. So this is going to be 121,500. This is going to be 162,000. This is going to be 112,000. You know you're doing these right when you get big numbers, by the way. And then we do the same for the x bar. So it's going to be this, 243,000, And they're big numbers most of the time because typically they're in millimeters or another small unit. And then we have 1,120,000 for the last one. So we want to sum the area times the y bars up. And we want to sum the area times the x bars up. So this is going to yield 395,500. That's millimeters cubed. Over here we have 1,759,000 even. So now we simply use our equations and we're good to go. So Y bar, once again, 
is equal to area times y bar sum over sum of the areas. So plug in for this, we have area times the y bar, which is right up here. So it's gonna be 395,500 over 100 or uh, 13,250, excuse me. It's gonna be millimeters cubed. It's gonna be millimeters squared. And that is gonna yield for us. Drum roll, please. Let me write it down here. 29.85 millimeters. So what is that exactly? That means all of this area, the Y bar, meaning halfway, um, basically the division of the area in half on the Y axis, it's gonna be about right here-ish, about right here, okay? So that means both the bottom half and top half are equal to each other area-wise at that point. So we wanna do the same for the X, so X bar equals some of the areas in the Y bar over some of the areas, making it um, 1,759,000 millimeters cubed all over 13,250 millimeters squared. Now, simply plug that in and we get X bar equals 132.8 millimeters, boom. So what does that mean? That means the total, that means half of um, the area on this side and this side are equal to each other at around this point right here. So literally this is probably the centroid of this shape and that is how you solve this. Thank you so much for watching. I'd really appreciate feedback and uh, most of all, please have an awesome day.